Choosing the right audio gear and using it correctly highly depends on what kind of video you make. So here's a slightly in-depth guide on how to get good vlogging audio. This isn't about telling you to spend as much money as you can. It's about common audio pitfalls that we hear all too often on YouTube while trying to keep costs down as much as is sensible. Step 1. Get as close as possible to the sound source. Doubling the distance halves the incoming sound pressure level. By moving further away, you're closing the gap in relative distance between your subject and everything that you don't want to pick up. This will create recordings with more reverb and more ambient noise. Also, reducing the incoming sound pressure level will result in higher gain requirements, introducing even more noise. The vlogger by nature doesn't really care about anything. So they need something that's quick and easy to use, lightweight, gives them basically absolute freedom of movement and on top of that is very discreet. A good choice would be a lavalier mic. These tiny devices are meant to be worn directly on your person. In contrast to a headset mic though, they are not directly in your face, creating much less of a visual distraction. To combat the resulting loss in clarity, they are usually EQ'd to boost high frequencies. In recent years, some lav mics have been developed to be used directly with smartphones, eliminating the need for an external recorder. Lav mics can at times be hidden underneath somebody's clothes, making them completely invisible. Here's how to use them. And this will probably still sound better than camera audio. They are generally omnidirectional, meaning that you can talk into them from any direction without appreciable difference. They will theoretically record more background noise than a cardioid would pick up, but when they are this close, aiming a cardioid becomes impossible, and because the mic is so close to you in the first place, background noise becomes less of an issue. I'm using the Rode SmartLav Plus, which is connected directly to my smartphone right here. The advantage of it is that the on-camera audio sounds basically like that. I'm standing here in a very colorless winter day, right in front of the lake or something, talking as if it means something. These types of microphones are available rather cheaply. They allow you to move around as freely as you like, whether your video is shot on your smartphone or an external camera, and the only thing you need, in addition to your phone, is this bag. But you can go even cheaper. If you can't or don't want to afford an actual microphone, you can take whatever comes with your phone itself. Chances are you or somebody you know will have a pair of these headphones with an attached microphone lying around. But what if you want to spend more? This is where making the right choice becomes rather tricky. If you're using a real camera and holding it in your hand, then, and only then, can you consider using one of these on-camera shotgun mics. The advantage of those is that they always emphasize whatever you point your camera at. If you have another person next to your subject, they will be equally as loud. Also, you don't need to sync audio with video manually, like you would when recording to an external recorder or your phone. Apart from that, there are not enough bad things I can say about these mics. They don't work like tele lenses. Their effect is only an emphasis on what comes from the front. They will still pick up sound from every direction. Take a look at the shotgun polar pattern. This represents the sensitivity of the mic in respect to where the sound comes from. The front, or zero degrees, is the most sensitive, so it's our reference minus zero decibels. This extremely strong directional effect of the mic introduces some weirdness, making the mic susceptible to sounds from the sides and the back. But the mic isn't completely deaf to anything at even a 45 degree angle. The least sensitive point is somewhere between minus 25 and minus 30 decibels, which is far away from silence. Also, reflections from the rear wall will be picked up rather loudly, as the 180 degree position is rather sensitive. Shotgun mics are designed to be held just outside the frame of the camera, which is a lot closer than most cameras would sensibly be placed. 
This also will require a boom operator to make sure that the mic is pointing exactly at the sound source. But it gets even worse. The polar pattern of any mic is dependent on frequency. For lower frequencies, everything moves towards an omnidirectional pickup pattern. And for a shotgun mic, the length actually makes a difference. Because it affects the threshold frequency of when the mic basically just transitions into a hypercardioid. The shorter they make these mics, the higher that frequency becomes. Which is why for film productions they use really long mics to make sure that the shotgun polar pattern works for effectively the entire frequency range of the human voice. And let me stress again that twice the distance means half the volume. If a mic is hypothetically 10 times as sensitive to anything right in front of it compared to anything from the sides, what if something to the sides is 10 times as close? It will be picked up at equal sensitivity. Mics don't work like camera lenses. If you want good audio, you need to get close. And plugging a cheap shotgun mic into the very bad preamp of practically any camera, except the ones that are so expensive that you should know better when purchasing them, you will introduce even more noise than you need to. And it gets worse. Shotgun mics are most often condensers, requiring power of some sort. This is why the majority of them are battery powered, introducing a glaring point of failure. This has the potential of ruining your shot. Because A, your battery runs out, or double A, you forgot to turn the mic on. Shotgun mics are terrible. Don't buy them unless you have a very clear understanding of why you need specifically a shotgun mic rather than any other one. Another more pricey solution would be a wireless system. These often come with a lav mic included. They also allow the subject to move around rather freely while still recording straight into the camera. The main issue with those is that they are pretty expensive and that wireless connections are prone to interference and always come with a limited range. Now the beauty of recording directly into your smartphone is that I'm basically sounding the same whether I'm here or here. Now it appears that someone's now taking my camera, which is pretty bad for me, but jokes on them, I've got the audio. Carrying the recorder, i.e. your phone with you, gives you practically unlimited range with zero interference issues. Cables, unless they are broken, have no signal dropout of any kind. This makes the SmartLav Plus and other microphones like it a more reliable choice than wireless setups, because synchronizing audio is easy. Clap as soon as the recording starts, line up the peaks from your camera's audio track to your external mic, Mute the camera's audio. Done.